Everything moves slowly in Yorkshire, and we like it that way. Except when we want to bulk create content. I decided I wanted to start a YouTube Shorts channel that publishes absurd and bizarre trivia questions. But, as I'm lazier than a whippet on a wet Sunday, I wanted to build an automation to do the legwork for me. Kushti. So here's how I did it. Follow along and build one yourself. So first, let's check out the tech stack I'm going to use. Firstly, I'll be using the awesome make.com to create the automation infrastructure. I'll also be using Google Sheets as a database. And finally, I'll be using Canva to create my YouTube shorts. Let's get a wriggle on. So here I am in make.com. I have set up a folder with four different workflow steps in it. Generate up some questions, alternative answers, set a random order, and then structure the data so we can send it to Canva and create our videos. So let's take a look at them one by one. Okay, so these are the absurd questions that are going to be generated. The first thing that's going to happen is we're going to open a Google Sheet and we called it Looney Lab Structure. Everything's going to happen inside of the sheet and we're going to first of all open the sheet name Topics, which is this one here. And you'll notice I've just put a load of random topics in here and when that topic's been done, it's just going to drop yes into there so it won't get done again. Um, so in this sheet, we're going to pick up any topic that does not have an operator existing in there. So the word yes. Um, so it's then going to pull those through an iterator one by one. And the next thing we're going to do is send it to OpenAI. And we've got an assistant on OpenAI. And what it does, it's been told it's a quiz master. And it's going to um, make up a series of questions called absurdities, which are based on obscure but true facts that people don't really know, um, generally. So we're going to make the output questions no more than 20 words in length. We're going to make the answer to each no more than three words in length. And that's important later on because we want to keep the amount of text inside of a certain format. So then we're going to create an absurdity-based question based around the topic that we pass through from this topics sheet here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have it output in a very specific format. So this is the format. Each absurdity or question, if you like, is going to have the actual question text. And then it's going to have the true answer to that question. And it's going to be wrapped in these pipes here. And that's really important because the next step is we're going to pass the output of this. Remember, there's going to be four of these and they're going to come in a single bundle. That's going to go into a text parser. And that text parser is going to, first of all, look for the double pipes at the beginning. And then it's going to look for everything inside of those pipes structured in this way. Um, this bit here where it's got the brackets dot star dot question mark means whatever's between those um, elements. So that's going to output for us a number of different bundles where each bundle is going to create the key value pair. We're then going to go through a router and the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to iterate through each of the key value pairs that we got back from the text parser. And then we're going to update a row in our Google Sheet with the answer and the question that we got back from each bundle in the text parser. And it's going to drop them into these values in a sheet called questions and answers. Let's have a look at that. That's here. I've already created a load already, so you can see them there. But what we've effectively got here is a question. That's what's going to come back and then the actual answer. So these are the two elements that are going to be brought back by running this module. So let's do that, shall we? Let's just make sure that we're only going to pull one for now. We'll just pull, pull one row. Otherwise, we'd, be, we'd start doing all of them in our topic sheet, and we don't want to do that for now. We're just going to do the one that's labeled the topic is dogs. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go into our questions and answers. We know we're going to be starting from row 24 here. So that's where it's going to drop these new key value pairs. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. 
Okay, so it's searching the sheet, it sent it to an iterator, so there's only one instance. It's now sent that to OpenAI and it's now creating a response. There it goes, it's sent a text parser, it's gone through the router. And what we'll see in this text parser, it's worth uh, viewing this, is we've got our one input bundle and that's coming from here, from uh, our OpenAI return. So that's what OpenAI returned. And now it's split these into four different bundles with the iteration numbered one, two, three, and four. And basically what we've now got here is the question and the answer. So once it does that, it's gonna go through our router. Firstly, it's passing through the iterator and the flow control is going to return each of those bundles one at a time and it's going to update that sheet. Superb, so let's see if it's done that. There we go, it's done that. So let's now look at our second part. This is where we're gonna generate alternative answers. So this is how it works. It's going to open up our Google Sheet, our questions and answers again. This time it's going to look for questions where there is a question, where there is an actual answer, but where the first wrong answer and the second wrong answer does not exist. So you'll see that in here, we've got our four new ones that we've made, but we don't currently yet have a right answer or a wrong answer. So here's what's going to happen. It's going to open those. It's gonna iterate through them one at a time, and then it's going to send a request to another assistant on OpenAI. And this time it's gonna create two incorrect answers to this question. It's going to follow a very specific format as well and this time it's going to go pipe and then it's going to have the alternative answer and then pipe dollar pipe and then another alternative answer and then it's going to go pipe dollar. Why is it going to do that? Well because we're going to pass it through a text parser so what's going to happen is we're going to pull out the pipe and then everything after the pipe, and then we're gonna to go to find a pipe and then a dollar sign. And then we're going to pull out everything from the pipe to a dollar sign. So effectively, we're gonna generate something that looks like pipe, first wrong answer, pipe, dollar sign, second wrong answer, pipe, dollar sign. And we're gonna be pulling this from the content output here, of course. And then very simply, what we're gonna do once we've pulled these out is we're gonna update the row and we're gonna put the first wrong answer that we get from our text parser into column C, and the second one into column D. So let's run that and see what happens. We'll run that and we'll open up this and you'll be able to see it occurring in real time. So our first wrong answer should pop up any second now. There we go. So we've now got tail and nose. The second one, classical and wrap. What is the name of the first dog in space? Well, we know it was Laker, but the actual wrong answers are Spot and Rover. And um, Indonesian farmers claimed alien visitors resembled. Let's put Chihuahuas and Golden Retrievers in there. Okay, so we've now done our second part, which is generating our alternative answers. Next, we're going to put our our correct answer and our two wrong answers in a random order, and this is how we're going to do it. So you'll see in the Google Sheet, we're going to open that up again, the questions and answers tab. We are going to filter by a few things. The question exists, the answer exists, the first and second wrong answer exists, but this time we have something not existing. And these are going to be the entries in A1 norm, A2 norm, and A3 norm. Let's have a look at those. So yes, we can see there's nothing in there at the moment. So here is what it's going to do. It's going to pass each one of these iteratively through into a tool, which is going to set multiple variables. In this case, it's gonna set three variables, A1, A2, and A3, which are going to be a random number of four decimal places. Now, I like to use slightly different decimal and thousand separators. I like to use the dot for decimal and the comma for thousands. By default, it's normally the other way around. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number and multiply it by 10,000. That's because the random number that's generated by make is a number between 1 and 0 with four decimal places. So I'm then going to turn that effectively into an integer. And I'm going to do the same for variable A2 and the same for variable A3 on a single cycle lifetime, okay? And then what we're gonna do here is I've set up a filter so that just in case um, any of the numbers are equal to each other, it's just going to skip that row. Okay, so now we're going to update the sheet. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put the actual numbers that we generated from this tool uh, variable creator here into A1, A2, and A3. And that's going to give us three columns of four-digit random numbers. Then it's going to go through a router, and this router has effectively got a number of uh, outputs to it, all of which have a filter. And the filters are determined by the order of those numbers. So if the A1 number is the biggest and the A2 number is the second and the A3 is the third, it will go down this route. Um, and for all of the different variations where, say, A2 is bigger than A3, is bigger than A1, it'll go down this. But all of these sheets' responses are exactly the same with one exception. They are simply going to put the answer um, to the question in the correct order. So in this one, we'd be going, the actual answer would be in one, the first wrong answer would be in two, second would be in order three. But as you can see down here, if we were to do it on this one, we'd have the um, second wrong answer would be question one, uh, answer one, the first wrong answer would be answer two, and the actual answer would be answer three. And that's going to update our sheet. So let's run that and see how that works. And we'll bring up the sheet as we do it. So we'll run that. We'll bring up our sheet. We'll see the numbers have been generated. And that's now reordering them. And it's got a column here for the correct answer. So we can spot it nice and easily. And that is basically this whole part. And now we're on to the final section of structuring our data so we can send it to Canva. Here is how we're going to do it. Okay, in this scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to open the sheet. Now, this time, what we are looking for on the questions and answers sheet is that an order one exists, order two, and order three exists, that it's been set as ready to package, um, and that's just a text operator, and that the correct answer exists, and that CSV packaged does not exist currently. So it's going to send those through. So it's then going to iterate through all of these. And the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to get a cell. And that cell is going to be my back end sheet and cell A2. Let me show you that. That's just simply so that I've got a number here, which is going to increment each time. And I'm going to apply this to each one of my rows. It's just a lot easier to keep track of things that way. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to do, but I'm going to get that cell. I'm going to set it as a variable. I'm going to pass that number and I'm going to add one to it. And the reason I'm passing number is that the data that's going to come back from the Google Sheet, it's going to try and treat it like a string otherwise. So this way, what we're going to do is we're going to turn that string into a number and then we're going to add the number one to it. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to decide which of the answers is correct. So if answer one is correct and it gets that from the sheet, then it's going to pass through to this flow here. If it's answer two, it's going to be this one. If it's answer three, it's this one. Now, remember, these flows are going to be pretty much identical. So let's just have a look at the answer two correct one. What it's going to do here is it's going to now set the value question into a sheet called A2 Correct Upload. And they're here, I've got A1 Correct Upload, A2 Correct Upload, and A3 Correct Upload. So let's go into our A2 one. We can see I've done a load already. Let's just make go to the first available line here, which is row nine. And what this is now gonna do is it's gonna drop the question into the question 
column, it's going to drop the A1, A2 and A3, the ordered answers. It's going to drop the file name, which it's going to get from the variable we set before. And then it's going to repeat A1, A2 and A3 into reveal A1, A2 and A3. And it's going to repeat the question into reveal Q as well. Why? We'll come to that when we get onto the Canva bulk uploading. So, um, what you'll notice what I've also done is I have added the upper um, argument to it. So what this this is a tool that basically turns whatever text is in here into uppercase because I want my answers to always be in uppercase, but I want my question to be in just normal case. Okay, and effectively that is then going to update another row. We're going to update the row in the questions and answers sheet and we're going to update it with the yes to the CSV packaged um, row. And then once again, we're going to go back and update the back end sheet and we're going to change it to the increment number, which was the number that we created before um, from this variable. So that's itself plus one and it's going to get rewritten onto that cell A2 on the back end sheet. So let's run that and see what happens. So what should be happening is let's see if we've actually got any in our questions and answers. Yes, we've got these here that are ready to package. So we're going to get we're going to get three of them heading into the A2 correct upload and we're going to get one heading into the A3 correct upload. So let's just get it to the right spot there. So we're going to start on row 10 um, for A3 and we're going to start on row 9 for A2. So let's let's run that and see what happens. Okay, we've got one running through here. We've got three run through here. Let's have a look at our structure now. For A1, there we go. We haven't got any more on there. For A2, we've now got, there we go, those are our two new ones. And for A3, we've got one that comes in there, which is fantastic. Okay, so that appears to have done what it's supposed to do. So we've now got our data in the form that we want to send it to Canva. So let's take a look at that. Now we need to actually do something manual. And the reason for that is that Canva, as of the date of making this video, have not yet created a REST API that we can ping this data directly to them. Uh, I am on the wait list. And if you want to get on the wait list too, you can find that on the Canva website. But effectively, what we're going to do here is we're now going to create videos of all of these questions. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, we're going to use the A2 ones here and we are simply going to click file. We're going to click download and we're going to save as a comma separated value. So let's do that. It's going to download it for us. As we can see, it should now appear there we go. There is our CSV file and that will be structured in exactly the same way as this sheet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to Canva in my Canva. And this is a folder that I've set up with three identical videos um, called answer one correct base, answer two and answer three correct base. Now I say they're identical. There is something that's different when the answer is revealed at the end. Um, the area the uh, that it's going to be revealed in is going to turn a different color. In this case, it's going to turn green, which is that you know obviously shows us which is the right answer. So let's just take a look at one of these. We'll take a look at um, the answer one correct one. So these are the different elements that are in Canva. And Canva, if you you haven't used it, is absolutely brilliant. There'll be a link in the description to go and give it a try for free. Um, and this is what you can do with it. So let's just first of all take a look at the actual template itself. I actually used somebody else's existing template. I just changed it around a bit. I generated this um, wonderful character here that you can see um, with uh, Dali, which was uh, dead easy and free to do. Um, I probably should upscale it a bit. It's a little bit grainy. 
um, but we can do all that sort of thing later. Um, I've obviously brought this text in across the top here, and then I've created a few areas, this blue area, plus a these um, orangey areas as well. And you'll see there's some text on them, and it's hard to read at the moment because there's actually two different lots of text here. Let me show you what I mean. So if we, we pull that one down, you can see that above it there is this one called Reveal Queue, and we've got Question. Now, we're actually going to pull the same data into both of these, but they're actually treated as completely different elements. And that's because in Canva, um, you can't have an element and then stop it and then have the same element come in later. So what I've actually done is I've put one on top of the other. But what you'll notice is that you can show the timing. Now, at the moment, I'm dealing with the timing of the element called question. And you can see it's going to run from the start here up until around... 20 seconds in and all that's going to happen during this time is the question's going to be pulled into that space there um, and then we're going to have the three answers pulled into these spaces here and time's just going to go along and not a great deal is going to happen and then uh, oh with this bit here that's rotating that's that's nice and interesting but then at some point we get this little clock pops up here and it counts down 10 right all the way down to one and then when it gets to that one point you'll see this corresponds with the end of this question point here what will happen is we'll get this video playing that does this okay and then it will reveal the answers now obviously this time we're using the reveal q and the reveal a i'm going to put that question one back so i don't forget just put it in exactly the same spot because we want them to appear right in the middle. And just so you know, um, up here you've got the spacing button here. You want to be clicking that and setting the anchor text box to central. That means that as the text starts to fill up here, it's going to push the box upwards and down as well. So the text is always going to be centered in the middle. If you had it at the top here, the text would always appear at the top, but it just doesn't look quite as good if you haven't got tons of text filling the whole box up. I've got the same here with A1 and the reveal, as you can see. They're just sitting on top of one another. So here at this point, we're going to have the, re the grand reveal happening. And that's going to show us the answer. And this one, because we're in answer one correct base template here, what's going to happen is this is going to turn green and it's going to start pulsing as well. Um, and obviously, if we go through, you'd be able to see that happening. There we go. OK, and that's basically what we've done for the graphics. And you can make them however you want. I'm really not the world's best designer at all, so it's very hard for me. And uh, obviously, there might be some people out there would put together something that looks superb compared to mine. Uh, but what we have here is you can also add some audio. I've actually added some stock audio in there, and that's going to play right up until the point that we get to the time's up bit and all the uh, streamers going and then we've got two more bits of audio in here to see it out one is an effect and the other one is a piece of music so what we're going to do is we're going to now we've got all these bits here we're going to map the csv file that we're going to upload so what we're going to do click the upload csv file button and we are obviously going to be uploading this one here, which is our structured load CSV. So let's upload that. And what you can see is I've actually mapped them already because I've created this previously. But let's say that you wanted to create uh, a new text element. Maybe uh, we've got one here that's unused file name. I could show you that. Um, we'll just drop some text on to the canvas here and we'll we'll put it there and we'll go um, this this is where the um, number will go okay if we go to our bulk upload again 
we've now see we've got a file name um, uh, column here which is not actually mapped to anything and the way that we do it is we click on the element where we want it we right click and we go to connect data and this time we're going to collect it to file name so you'll now see that it's now passed in this variable file name and if we were to continue what we're going to see now is we're going to apply all the data so all of those 10 rows that we've got into the different areas on here so the questions we're going to question and reveal and question reveal the answers we're going to answer one answer two answer three and answer reveal one answer reveal two and answer reveal three and all we have to do is to click to start this going is to click generate the designs and let's see what happens it will open up a new window and now what we've got is not just one but we've got 10 pages of the same design with different text um, pushed into them. So this one, for example, um, is going on about a garden gnome um, disappearing and uh, three answers, Hawaii, Bermuda, Bahamas. And obviously we get the reveal at the end as being Hawaii. The next one is uh, a question. <laughs> well, that's an interesting one. A man legally changes name to what? So we could avoid court judgment of foreclosure on his home. Right. Um, okay. So we're going to reveal the answer at the end as well. Satan. Okay. <laughs> Strange old world. Um, and so on and so forth. And we've got all 10 of these that we can now simply download. All we have to do is click the share button, click download. We're going to download them as an MP4 video. Uh, I'm just going to do them at 1080p. Um, HD I don't need to go any higher but you can go up to 4k if you really want I'm gonna leave them there it just makes the file smaller make sure you've got all the pages selected so that I'll download all of the different instances and whatever you do click download pages as separate files because that's going to separate them into individual videos and then you simply click the download button to begin now that'll take a while and we'll come back in a moment and see how that's doing. So it's finished downloading my videos. Let's just have a look at those. We can unzip them and it creates a new folder. And if we now have a look in this folder, hear our, our videos. Fantastic. <laughs> So that's it, we've created our fantastic automated trivia videos. Obviously we had to do a little bit of manual work due to the fact that the Canva API isn't available yet, but hopefully it will be in the coming weeks and we'll be able to send the data directly without having to download any CSV files, which would just be absolutely magnificent. I mean, can you imagine this churning out 20, 30 bits of short content every single day? You will very quickly have a channel with tons and tons of completely unique videos on them. Hope you've enjoyed that. Another bit of AI automation from God's own country of Yorkshire. Ta-ra for now.